Good morning, church. It's so good to be with you all this morning, and I've officially gone country. You're welcome. <laughs> uh, but I wanted to get on here to encourage you a little bit. I think that we, as uh, the people of God, uh, are built for community, not just people of God, but generally humans. Uh, we're built for a community, we're built for encouragement, and I know for myself, I love getting unexpected encouragement, especially in a text message to say how wonderful and amazing I am and how they're blessed to have me in their life. And um, I promise I didn't sell, send that text message to myself, but it's encouragement. It's beautiful. And I think that uh, I hope you're doing that throughout this quarantine. Um, but I wanted to share a quick word with you. It's something that God's been putting on my heart for the past, I would say, three weeks or so. And the more that I've prayed through it, the more that I've um, meditated on it, the bigger the prompting was to share it with you this morning. And so I truly, truly, truly believe that this word is for the church of God. It's for the children of God. And I know that in this time of quarantine, there's many things that we probably are processing, thinking through, praying through, meditating on. So I truly believe that this is the word of God to the church of God and to his children who he loves so dearly. So I want to encourage you today to uplift you, to maybe give you perspective again and to remind you that you are so, 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 so very loved by the Most High God. The living God and so I'll be sharing a little bit from 2nd Peter chapter 1 verses 3 to 10 and so before we get into the reading of the verses you're more than welcome to grab a Bible if not you could do so after and allow the Holy Spirit to minister to you but I'll read these verses quickly his divine power has granted to us all things that pertain to life and godliness through the knowledge of him who called us to his own glory and excellence, by which he has granted to us his precious and very great promises, so that through them you may become partakers of the divine nature, having escaped from the corruption that is in the world because of sinful desire. For this very reason, make every effort to supplement your faith with virtue, and virtue with knowledge, and knowledge with self-control, and self-control with steadfastness, and steadfastness with godliness, and godliness with brotherly affection, and brotherly affection with love. For if these qualities are yours and are increasing, they keep you from being ineffective and unfruitful in the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. For whoever lacks these qualities is so nearsighted and is blind, having forgotten he was cleansed from his former sins. Therefore, brothers, be all the more diligent to confirm your calling and election, for if you practice these things, you will never fall. Those are some big words. <laughs> Very daunting, right? It says in the word that all of us have fallen short of God's glory. But I want to underline a little bit about what Peter is talking about here. And he's talking about the fact that all of us have fallen short of the glory, but what he's talking about here is that there is a divine power in us that gives us the ability to not fall into our past things that God has freed us from. This divine power is from the Spirit of God. It's what we have received as a gift from God. And Jesus Christ, he died on the cross and then he rose again. Yes, he rose again. He's sitting on the throne of God, but in his place, he has sent us the Holy Spirit to dwell inside of us so that you and I, we can walk in freedom. The most interesting thing that I really love reading in the word was that when Jesus Christ, he was hanging on the cross and he said, it was finished. That means that he took every sin, every shame upon the cross. He died and he rose and there was power given to the gospel of Jesus Christ. 
And there was also his spirit that was given. The one that empowers us to walk in the authority and the power of the Most High God. And that is beautiful for you and I. It's really difficult without the Spirit of God to be able to overcome our fleshly desires. It's difficult. But the beauty is that it's possible in, in and by the Spirit. If we walk in the Spirit, we produce the fruits of the Spirit. And those fruits are evident that we are allowing the Holy Spirit to guide us, to comfort us, to help us resist and withstand the threats, the temptations of the enemy. That is the beauty and the essence of the gospel of Jesus Christ. It says here that we have been granted all things that pertain to life and godliness. To say that we will be perfect, most likely not. We are still human. But the reality is that we, you and I, we were given the power of the Most High God by His Spirit that is dwelling inside of us to be able to overcome our flesh and be able to stand for the things that are of God. I love this a little tidbit that the Holy Spirit revealed to me about Old Testament versus New Testament. In the Old Testament, the Holy Spirit would come upon God's people and they would be empowered to do the things of God. But the New Testament, man, you and I, we have the Holy Spirit, God himself, dwelling inside of us. That is beautiful. That means... Today, right now, this minute, the second, you and I, we are able to walk in the power and in the authority of the Most High God. But the difficulty is that sometimes that knowledge does not take root. And that's why we kind of fall back into the things of our past, the things that we know God has freed us from by faith. And those things are the things that I want to talk about today. Those things are strongholds. They're strongholds that stand against the knowledge of God. And so the more I meditated on and prayed through it, the, the Lord has been revealing certain things like certain mindsets in the children of God, whether it be depression or anxiety or severe fear. And these things are lasting things. It could be an addiction to a former sin, meaning that you keep falling back into it. Or maybe it's a trauma from your past and those things in that experience for you has been so traumatizing you that it's burdened you so much that you're unable to absorb or take by faith the truth of God that is in his word. And so today I want to encourage you and to remind you that we are called to destroy those strongholds in our life. Those strongholds, they literally stand against the knowledge of, of God, our God, the God of the Bible. And so when those strongholds, they take root in our lives, they begin to basically seep in and take root. And so even if we do hear the truth of God, like we have been set free, <laughs> or those that are, have been set free are free indeed, or that through Christ we have freedom, or that where there is a spirit, there is freedom. Those types of truths, they are unable to take root because we've built upon an unhealthy foundation. But the Lord and the Holy Spirit is prompting the children of God today, today, is to maybe sit down and take time to meditate and pray through and say, God, what is it in my life that is not allowing me to walk in the freedom that you so graciously gave me? Holy Spirit, reveal that to me. And then, <laughs> I know this can also be daunting, but bring it into the light. Reach out to your pastors, to our pastors, to your leaders, 
and bring it into the light. The enemy, he has no power in the light because he deals in the darkness. And when you bring it into the light, there is so much freedom in that. And allow them to minister to you. Allow the Holy Spirit to minister to you, to destroy those strongholds so that you can walk in the power and the anointing of the Spirit of God that dwells inside of you. Those strongholds, they often quench and they grieve the Holy Spirit. And it can be very hard to overcome them. So I want to remind you today that you are not alone. <laughs> it says in the word that Christ is our intercessor. <laughs> oh, he is interceding for you and I. He stands on the throne of God. And he says, he, I died for them. I know what they're going through right now. I've been tempted the th with the things that they've been tempted with. And he mediates for us. And that is beautiful. And this is a reminder to you that you are not alone. There is power that dwells inside of you. So I want to encourage you today. Maybe you feel like you're cornered. <laughs> Maybe the enemy is taunting you today. Maybe he's tormenting you about the things of your past, about your addictions or the things that you thought you overcame. And he's telling you that you'll never overcome your addiction to porn. He's telling you, you will never overcome your addiction to fornication or drugs. You will never overcome your depression or anxiety or the fear that you feel. You will never overcome that. And those things, those things are from the enemy. But the beauty is that we serve the God that is truth, the God that speaks truth. And so if you're feeling that way today, I want you to proclaim the word of God over your life. God's word is so profound there's so much power and authority in the word of God. And when those words are spoken and proclaimed, they will produce, they will produce some fruit. Yes, they will. And the enemy will have no power over you because you are the child and the son and the daughter of the Most High King. You are, you have been washed by the blood of the Lamb. You have been marked for every good work. You have been anointed and sealed by the Holy Spirit to walk in truth and life and love and faith and hope. Yes, those are the promises of God. And God is not a liar. The enemy is a liar. So I want you to proclaim those words over your life. And if you're struggling with something, bring it into the light. Allow God's word to wash you, to break through into every dark place and allow him to set you free. He is the God of freedom. And to say that you have no freedom is to say that Christ died in vain and he did not. Oh, how you are loved and he adores you and he desires you to walk in purpose and calling. And it's only in the freedom of Christ is the anointing of God the strongest in your life so that you are able to fulfill your purpose and calling. And the enemy, he cannot stop you then. No matter what he throws at you, no matter what dart or te what temptation or any people he sends your way to knock you down, you will stand in the authority and the anointing of the Most High God. It says in the word that Christ defeated the enemy. He defeated, that is past tense, 
Therefore, you are able. Be strong and mighty. Blessings.